Today I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with Amanda Lacaz from Linus Corporation. How are you today? I'm great, thanks, Tracy. How are you? I'll tell you, Amanda, uh, the Investor Intel audience loves Linus. I think you were trending number one most read and most reviewed company on our site for over a month here this last month and a half. Can you tell me what's happening with Linus that is making so many people so interested in you presently? Well, we have certainly had a very interesting uh, year and in some ways that's in the context of the old Chinese proverb, proverb may you live, or oh, not proverb, curse, may you live in interesting times. Um, and we have had a very interesting year. And I think that that makes for good column inches in newspapers and probably <laughs> online and, and so people are very interested to see what's happening. Um, we face some um, uh, really unprecedented political pressures here in Malaysia um, with the change of government in May 2018. Um, through the year, we had another, uh, the fourth scientific review that has been done in Malaysia. Um, it came out with a clean report card that said that we were low risk and compliant with all regulation. Uh, however, it, we have continued to be something of a political football here in Malaysia. That's been uh, somewhat resolved with the renewal of our operating licence um, just over a month ago and with a clear pathway for continued operations here in Malaysia. Of course, the other thing which has occurred in this year was the unsolicited proposal to take over, which occurred in uh, Australia. Um, that too now has, uh, you know, the, the proposed bidder has, has withdrawn their interest. But of course, that's another thing which keeps people interested in our company. And, and the third thing, of course, is the continuing trade tensions. I think that it is interesting that as, as reported, um, and, and as I've uh, you know, sort of followed the coverage, the Chinese have only made two very significant threats as part of the trade war, and one is that they will stop buying American agricultural pro produce, and the second is that they will cease the export of rare earth magnets to, to the US or rare earths to the US. So all of these things make for a very interesting company. Um, so those are the external factors. Internally, we have made a number of announcements about our, our growth plans. So in 2018, we implemented a project we called Linus Next, which took us from nameplate capacity of about 5,000 tonnes a year of NDPR to about 7,000 tonnes a year of NDPR. We, in May, announced our Linus 2025 plans where we said that by 2025 we would be able to produce 10,500 tonnes a year of NDPR. And that brings with it a $500 million capital expansion. And that, of course, is always very interesting to the market. Well, of course, we watched the way you handled the renewal of your license in Malaysia. So I'd like to start with saying congratulations. And then just jumping into the, the bidding that happened for you, um, are you seeing an increase in interest in bids or just in Linus in general? I mean, you know, everybody wants to have a supplier rare earths and, and you're the game to, to go for. Um, not really. And, you know, with respect to the proposal that was you know, floated by, by Res Farmers, it, it we really think that the rare earth market is quite a small market and a pure play is going to give our shareholders the best return um, compared to being inside a conglomerate. And I think that you, know, you have plenty of evidence of companies which has pure plays in small niche markets are very successful. And then when they go into a conglomerate, um, focus is lost. Uh, customers have less confidence in the amount of attention that that business will get. And therefore, the business is, is not as robust and not as successful. So as we've spoken to our shareholders about it, 
we've spoken to them about the value of Linus being a pure play and the way that that works both in terms of business operations and the unrelenting focus that we have on our on, on being a great rare earth supplier, but also it really does matter with customers who are really very um, uh, keen to see the sort of uh, singularity that we have as a pure play. Well, of course, with rare earths getting as much media play as they're getting in North America presently, we all really took note when you made the, what was it, an MOU, of course, with Blumenthal and uh, Blue, Blue Line in Texas. Can you tell us a little bit more about this deal? Well, this is very exciting. So we see the U.S. market as being a wide open market. The U.S. has allowed itself to be disintermediated in the rare earths uh, industry, and that is a risk for U.S. manufacturers because ultimately, um, and we have seen this, that the Chinese have over 30 years um, steadfastly marched down the value chain. And um, so today they're in the business not only of rare earths, um, uh, mining, separation, metal making, magnet making, component making, and ultimately the finished material. And I guess in the U.S., you guys, many would say, at what stage is a U.S. vehicle a U.S. vehicle? Is it when it's just assembled from components which have been shipped in from China? So, you know, there is a large component manufacturing industry in the U.S. and having security of supply for the inputs to that industry is very important. So we see the U.S. market as a market where with the right presence and the right development that there is significant opportunity for growth. With respect to our MOU with Blue Line, and as you pointed out with John, John Blumenthal as the principal of that company, um, Texas is actually a great place to do business. Uh, we are very much looking forward to um, operating there. The first stage of what we do there will be focused on heavy rare earth separation. Heavy rare earths today cannot be separated anywhere except in China. Um, so even we do not separate our own heavy rare earths today. We sell our SEG product to a separator in China. But heavy rare earths are essential. High performance magnets used in electric vehicles must have at least a small component of either dysprosium or terbium added to them. And of course, they are used in many other applications, medical uh, and particularly some of the defense applications which are often covered in the US press. So a heavy rare earth separation line as a starting point we think is really important and it builds out our product portfolio. But as we think about what we're doing in the US, it will not be limited only to heavy rare earths. And over time, we would expect that we will continue to grow. The market will grow. And whilst I'm often not a fan of build it and they will come, we have a strong belief that if we do establish this facility, that we will um, create additional activity in the rare earths uh, supply chain. And that will be good for American business, and it will be good for Linus. You've brought up a number of very good points here, and I just want to, I spoke to two different CEOs today in the United States that both gave me very different answers. One stated that to achieve uh, sustainability criteria with the Department of Defense, the actual product or the actual resource has to come off of U.S. soil. Uh, the other individual I spoke to who also claims to be in negotiations with the Department of Defense told me that is incorrect and that an ally would suffice when it comes to rare earths. Can you comment on this? The U.S. has what they call the um, defense industrial base and it includes a few a very few, I think there's four or five, very close allies of the U.S. Uh, Australia is one of those. Uh, as an interesting factoid for your audience, Australia is the only country that has fought alongside the U.S. in every war since 1917. We are 
close allies militarily we are close allies in terms of our cultural what we share culturally um and i think as the politicians often say we're just great mates so um the defence industrial base was set up in such a way that the US could consider uh, how could they, um, as I understand, I'm not an expert on US defence uh, policy, but how could they protect uh, defence and defence needs? And certainly their close allies form part of that industrial base. So. I think that um, I, I, I think that you don't have to be all that clever to draw the line between the fact that the US would rather have the material on US on US soil. That doesn't mean it has to come from US soil. And so what should we, having had the year that you've had this last year, there's just, there is a lot of news. Is there a highlight that you can draw our attention to that we as shareholders should anticipate in this upcoming quarter or two? Well, I, I think that the, the thing that I would be most proud of over the last year is despite all the external uh, distractions, that our core business remained steadfast focused on delivering a great outcome. Um, our people, uh, despite all of, of the pressures, um, remained with us. And so what that does is it continues to build a very solid platform for us moving forward. I, I think we have actually covered the big things. I think that sometime before the end of the year, we will uh, confirm the site that we will use for our new facility in Australia and hopefully sometime before the end of the year or early next year we will confirm the details related to our Texas expansion. We're very excited about the opportunity to basically reshape the company. You, you rarely have that opportunity um, and we are now reshaping the company and future-proofing it by creating this more diverse industrial footprint by basically having our upstream activities close to our resource in Western Australia and our downstream activities close to our customers, either here in Asia or in the US. Um, and of course, Asia is also perfectly um, placed to serve our Northern European customers who are incredibly important as well. So um, I think really uh, progress on these really big company shaping projects is probably the thing that we are most excited about in the business at present. Well, Amanda, thank you so much for your time and for this interview today. It's nice to see you. Thanks, Casey.